Shocked yowls rose from the clan cats and echoed through the forest. Ravenpaw staggered slightly, his right foreleg glistened, wet with blood that flowed from the deep gash on his shoulder. We met five river clan warriors beside the stream, not far from the sunning rocks, he went on shakily. Oakheart was among them. Oakheart? Greypaw gasped beside Firepaw. He's the deputy of River Clan. He's the one of the greatest warriors in the forest. Lucky Ravenpaw, wish I could have been me. I'd have really... Greypaw was silenced by a fierce glance from the old Grey Tom who had first sensed Ravenpaw's return. Firepaw turned his retention back to Ravenpaw. Rentail warned Oakheart to keep his hunting parties out of ThunderClan territory. He said the next River Clan warrior to be caught in ThunderClan territory would be killed, but Oak... Oakheart would not back down. He said his clan had to be fed whatever we threatened. Ravenpaw paused to wheeze for breath. His wound was still bleeding heavily, and he stood awkwardly to keep the weight off his shoulder. That's when the river clan cats attacked. It was hard to see what was happening. The fighting was ferocious. I saw Oakheart had Redtail pinned to the ground, but then Redtail... Suddenly, Ravenpaw's eyes rolled in his head, and he lurched sideways. Half scrambling, half falling, he slithered off the high rock and collapsed on the ground below. A ginger queen bounded toward him and crouched at his side. She licked his cheek briefly and called out, Spotted Leaf! Out of the fern-shaded corner trotted a pretty tortoiseshell firepaw I had noticed sitting beside Graypaw earlier. She hurried over to Ravenpaw and meowed for the queen to stand back. Then she used her small pink nose to roll the apprentice over so that she could get a good look at the wound. She glanced up and meowed, it's all right, Dory Goldenflower. His wounds aren't fatal, but I'll need to fetch some cobwebs to stop the bleeding. As Spotted Leaf sprinted back to her den, the hushed silence in the clearing was broken by a mournful howl. All eyes turned to the direction it had come from. A massive dark brown tabby staggered through the gorse tunnel. Between his sharp teeth, the warrior held no prey but the lifeless body of another cat. He dragged the tattered creature into the center of the clearing. Firepaw craned his neck and glimpsed a flash of bright ginger tail hanging limply in the dust. Shock rippled through the clan like a chill breeze. Beside Firepaw, Greypaw dropped into the crouch as grief swept over him. Red Tail! How did this happen, Tiger Claw? demanded Blue Star from her position on the high rock. Tiger Claw let the scruff of Red Tail's neck fall from his mouth. He looked steadily back at Blue Star. He died with honor, struck down by Oakheart. I couldn't save him, but I managed to take Oakheart's life while he was still gloating over his victory. Tigerclaw's voice was strong and deep. Redtail's death was not in vain, for I doubt we'll see Riverclan hunters in our territory again. Firepaw glanced at Greypaw. The apprentice's eyes were dark with that sadness. After a moment's pause, several of the cats moved forward to lick Redtail's bedraggled fur. As they groomed, they purred hushed phrases to the dead warrior. Firepaw whispered into Greypaw's ear, What are they doing? Greypaw didn't take his eyes off the dead cat as he replied. His spirit may have left to join Star Clan, but the clan will share tongues with Redtail one last time. Star Clan? Firepaw echoed. It's the tribe of heavenly warriors that watches over all clan cats. You can see them in Silverpelt. Firepaw looked confused, so Greypaw explained. Silverpelt is that thick band of stars you see each night stretching across the sky. Each star is a Star Clan warrior. Redtail will be among them tonight. Firepaw nodded, and Greypaw stepped forward to share tongues with his dead deputy. Blue Star had remained silent while the first cats came to pay their respects to Redtail. Now she leaped down from the high rock and walked slowly toward Redtail's body. The other cats retreated and watched as their leader crouched down to share tongues with her old comrade one last time. When she had finished, she raised her head and spoke. Her voice was low and thick with grief, and the clan listened in silence. Redtail was a brave warrior. His loyalty to Thunder Clan could never be touted. I always relied on his judgment, for it bore witness to the needs of the clan, and was never swayed by self-interest or pride. He would have made a fine leader. Then she lowered herself onto her belly, her head bowed, her paws stretched neatly before her, and silently she grieved for her lost friend. 
Several other cats came and lay down beside her, their bowed heads and hunched backs echoing her mournful pose. Firepaw watched. He hadn't known Redtail, but he couldn't help feeling moved as he witnessed the clan mourn. Graypaw came and stood beside him again. Dustpaw will be sad, he remarked. Dustpaw? Redtail's apprentice, that brown striped tabby over there. I wonder who his new mentor will be. Firepaw glanced over at the small Tom who squatted near Redtail's body, staring unseeing at the ground. Firepaw looked past him to the clan leader. How long will Blue Star sit with him? he asked. Probably the whole night, replied Graypaw. Redtail is with her deputy for many, many moons. She won't want to let him go too quickly. He was one of the best warriors. Not as big as powerful as Tigerclaw or Lionheart, but quick and clever. Firepaw looked at Tigerclaw, admiring the strength that swelled in his powerful muscles and broad head. His massive body showed signs of his warrior life. One of his ears was slit, split into a deep V shape, and a thick scar sliced the bridge of his nose. Suddenly, Tigerclaw stood up and stalked over to Ravenpaw. Spotted Leaf was crouching beside Tigerpaw's wounded apprentice, using her teeth and front paws to press wads of cobweb onto his shoulder wound. Firepaw leaned toward Graypaw and asked, What's Spotted Leaf doing? Stopping the bleeding. Looked like a nasty cut. And Ravenpaw seemed really shaken up. He's always been a bit jumpy, but I've never seen him this bad before. Let's go and see if he's woken up yet. They made their way through the grieving cats toward the spot where Ravenpaw lay and settled themselves a respectable distance away to wait until Tigerclaw had finished speaking. So, Spotted Leaf, Tigerclaw addressed the tortoiseshell with a confident meow. How is he? Do you think you can save him? I've spent a lot of time trimming him up, and I don't want my efforts to be wasted the first battle. Spotted Leaf didn't look up from her patient as she replied. Yes, a pity if after all your valuable training he dies in his first fight, eh? Firepaw could hear a teasing purr in her soft mew. Will he live? Tigerclaw demanded. Of course! He just needs to rest! Tigerpaw snorted and looked down at the motionless black shape. He jabbed Ravenpaw with one of his front claws. Come on then! Get up! Ravenpaw didn't move. Look at the length of that claw! Firepaw hissed. Too late, replied Graypaw with feeling. I know I wouldn't want to get into a fight with him. Not so fast, Tigerclaw. Spotted Leaf placed her paw over Tigerclaw's sharp talon and gently moved it away. This apprentice needs to keep as still as possible until the cut is healed. We don't want him opening his wound by jumping about trying to please you. Leave him alone. Firepaw found himself holding his breath as he waited for Tigerclaw's reaction. He guessed that few cats dared to give orders to the warrior like that. The big tabby stiffened and seemed about to speak when Spotted Leaf meowed teasingly. Even you know better than to argue with a medicine cat, Tigerclaw. Tigerclaw's eyes flashed at the little tortoiseshell's words. I wouldn't dare argue with you, dear Spotted Leaf, he purred. He turned to leave and caught sight of Graypaw and Firepaw. Who's this? he asked Graypaw, towering above them. He's a new apprentice, Graypaw mewed. He smells like a kitty pet, snorted the warrior. I was a house cat, Firepaw meowed boldly, but I'm going to train to be a warrior. Tigerclaw looked at him with sudden interest. Ah, oh, yes, now I remember. Blue Star mentioned that he had stumbled upon some stray kitty pet. So she's actually trying you out, is she? Firepaw sat up very straight, anxious to impress this distinguished clan warrior. That's right, he meowed respectfully. Tigerclaw eyed him thoughtfully. Then I shall watch your progress with interest. Firepaw puffed his chest out proudly as Tigerclaw stalked away. Do you think he liked me? I don't think Tigerclaw likes any apprentices, whispered Graypaw. Just then, Ravenpaw stirred and twitched his ears. Has he gone? He mumbled. Who, Tigerclaw? Replied Graypaw, trotting toward him. Yep, he's gone. Hi there, Firepaw began, about to introduce himself. Go away, both of you! Sp Spotted Leaf protested. How am I to meant to help this cat with all these interruptions? She impatiently flicked her tail at Graypaw and Firepaw and pushed her way between them and her patient. Firepaw realized she was serious, despite the lively glimmer in her warm amber eyes. Come on then, Firepaw, mewed Graypaw. 
I'll show you around. See you later, Ravenpaw. The two cats left Spotted Leaf and with Ravenpaw and walked across the clearing. Graypaw looked thoughtful. He was clearly taking his duties as a guide very seriously. You know High Rock already, he began, flicking his tail toward the big, smooth rock. Blue Star always addresses the clan from there. Her den's down there. He lifted his nose toward a hollow in the side of the High Rock. Her den was carved down many moons ago by an ancient stream. Hanging lichen draped the entrance, sheltering the leader's nest from wind and rain. The warriors sleep over there, Graypaw went on. Firepaw followed him to a large bush a few paces away from the high rock. There was a clear view from here right down to the gorse entrance into the camp. The branches of the bush hung low, but Firepaw could see a sheltered space inside where the warriors made their nests. Senior warriors sleep nearest the center where it's warmest, explained Graypaw. They usually share their fresh kill together over by that clump of nettles. The younger warriors eat nearby. Sometimes they're invited to join the senior warriors for eating, which is a big honor. What about the other clan cats? Firepaw asked, fascinated but feeling rather overwhelmed by all the traditions and rituals of clan life. Well, the clean queens share warrior quarters when they work as warriors, but when they're expecting kits or nursing them, they stay in a nest near the nursery. The elders have their own place on the other side of the clearing. Come on, I'll show you. Firepaw trotted after Graypaw, across the clearing and past the shadowy corner where Spotted Leaf had her den. They stopped beside a fallen tree that sheltered a patch of lush grass. Crouched amongst the soft greenery were four elderly cats tucking into a plum young rabbit. Dustpaw and Sandpaw would have brought them that, whispered Graypaw. One of the princess's duties is catching fresh kill for the elders. Hello, youngster, one of the elders greeted Graypaw. Hello, small ear, mewed Graypaw, nodding respectfully. This must be your new apprentice. Firepaw, isn't it? Meowed a second Tom. His patchy fur was dark brown and there was only a stump where his tail should have been. That's right, Firepaw replied, copying Graypaw's polite nod. I'm Halftail, purred the brown Tom. Welcome to the clan. Have you two eaten? Meowed Small Ear. Firepaw and Graypaw both shook their heads. Well, there's enough here. Dustpaw and Sandpaw are turning into fine hunters. Would you mind if these youngsters shared a mouse, one eye? The pale gray queen who lay beside him shook her head. Firepaw noticed one of her eyes was clouded and sightless. What about you, Dappletail? The other elder, a tortoise shell she cat with a gray muzzle, meowed in a voice cracked with age. Of course not. Thank you, meowed Graypaw eagerly. He stepped forward and took a large mouse from the pile of prey, then dropped it at Firepaw's feet. You still haven't tasted mouse? he asked. No, Firepaw admitted. He suddenly felt excited by the warm smells that were rising from this piece of fresh kill. His whole body quivered at the thought of sharing his first real food as a clan member. In that case, he can have first bite. Just save me some. Graypaw dipped his head and stood back to give Firepaw room. Firepaw crouched down and took a large bite from the mouse. It was juicy and tender and sang with the flavors of the forest. What do you think? asked Graypaw. Fantastic, mumbled Graypaw, his mouth still full. Move over then, mewed Graypaw, stepping forward and bending his head to take a bite. As the two apprentices shared the mouse, they listened to the elders talk amongst themselves. How long before Blue Star appoints a new deputy? asked Small Ear. What did you say, Small Ear? mewed One Eye. I think your hearing has become as poor as your eyesight, snapped Small Ear impatiently. I said how long before Blue Star appoints a new deputy? One Eye ignored Small Ear's irritated reply and spoke instead to the tortoiseshell queen. Dappletail, do you remember the day many moons ago when Blusa herself was appointed deputy? Dappletail mewed earnestly. Oh yes, it was not long after she lost her kits. She'll not be happy to be appointed a new deputy, Small Ear observed. Redtail served her long and well, but she'll need to make up her mind quickly. According to clan custom, the choice has to be made before Moon High after the death of the old deputy. At least this time the choice is obvious, meowed Halftail. Firepaw raised his head and looked around the clearing. Who could Halftail mean? To Firepaw, all the warriors looked worthy of becoming deputy. 
Perhaps he meant Tiger Claw. After all, he had avenged Redtail's death. Tiger Claw was not sitting far off, his ears angled toward the Elder's conversation. As Firepaw stretched with his tongue to lick the last traces of mouse from his whiskers, Blue Star's voice called from the high rock. Redtail's body still lay in the clearing below, pale gray in the fading light. A new deputy must be appointed, she meowed. But first, let us give thanks to Star Clan for the life of Redtail. Tonight he sits with his fellow warriors among the stars. Silence fell as all the cats looked up to the sky, which was beginning to darken as evening crept over the forest. And now I shall name Thunderclan's new deputy, Blue Star continued. I say these words before the body of Redtail so that his spirit may hear and approve my choice. Firepaw looked at Tigerclaw. He couldn't help noticing the hunger in the big warrior's amber eyes as he stared up at the high rock. Lionheart, mewed Blue Star will be the new deputy of ThunderClan. Firepaw was curious to see Tiger Claw's reaction, but the dark warrior's face revealed nothing as he moved to congratulate Lionheart with a nudge so hearty that it almost pushed the golden tabby off balance. Why didn't she make Tiger Claw deputy? Firepaw whispered to Graypaw. Probably because Lionheart has been a warrior longer, so he has a lot more experience. Graypaw murmured back, still looking up at Blue Star. Blue Star spoke again. Redtail will also mentor to young Dustpaw. Since there will be no delay in the training of our apprentices, I shall appoint Dustpaw's new mentor immediately. Darkstripe, you are ready for your first apprentice, so you will continue Dustpaw's training. You had a fine mentor in Tigerclaw, and I expect you to pass on some of the excellent skills you were taught. The tabby warrior swelled with pride as he showed his acceptance with a solemn nod. He strode over to Dustpaw, bent his head, and rather awkwardly touched noses with his new apprentice. Dustpaw flicked his tail respectfully, but his eyes were still dull with grief for his lost mentor. Blue Star raised her voice. I shall keep a vigil with Redtail's body tonight before we bury him at sunrise. She jumped down from the high rock and walked over to lie beside Redtail's body once more. Many of the other cats joined her, Dustpaw, and Small Leader among them. Should we sit with them too? Firepaw suggested. He had to admit the idea didn't appeal to him much. It had been a busy day and he was beginning to feel tired. All he wanted to do was find somewhere warm and dry to curl up and sleep. Graypaw shook his head. No, only those who are close to Redtail will share his final night. I'll show you where we sleep. The apprentice's den is over here. Firepaw followed Graypaw to a thick bush of ferns that lay behind a mossy tree stump. All the apprentices share their fresh kill by this stump, Graypaw told him. How many apprentices are there? Firepaw asked. Not as many as usual. Just me, you, Ravenpaw, Dustpaw, and Sandpaw. As Graypaw and Firepaw settled themselves beside the tree stump, a young she-cat crawled out from beneath the ferns. Her coat was ginger, like Firepaw's, but much paler, with barely visible stripes of darker fur. So here's comes the new apprentice, she meowed, narrowing her eyes. Hello, Firepaw meowed. The young cat sniffed rudely. He smells like a kitty pet. Don't tell me I'm going to have to share my nest with that revolting stench. Firepaw felt rather taken aback. Since his fight with Longtail, all the cats have been quite friendly. Maybe they've just been distracted by Ravenpaw's news, he thought. You'll have to excuse Sandpaw, apologized Graypaw. I think she must have had a furball stuck somewhere. She's not usually this bad-tempered. Spat Santa Claus crossly. Hold on, youngsters. The deep voice of Whitestorm sounded behind the apprentices. Sandpaw, as my apprentice, I expected you to be a little more welcoming to this newcomer. Sandpaw held up her head and looked defiant. I'm sorry, Whitestorm, she purred, not sounding sorry at all. I just didn't expect to be training with a kitty pet, that's all. I'm sure you'll get used to it, Sandpaw, meowed Whitestorm calmly. Now, it's getting late and training starts early tomorrow. You three should get some sleep. He gave Sandpaw a stern look and she nodded obediently. As he walked off, she spun around and vanished into the clump of ferns, sniffing once more as she brushed past Firepaw. With a flick of his tail, Graypaw invited Firepaw to follow him and led the way after Sandpaw. 
Inside the sleeping area, the ground was lined with soft moss and the pale moonlight turned everything a delicate shade of green. The air was fragrant with fern scent and warmer than outside. Where do I sleep? Firepaw asked. Anywhere, just as long as it's not near me, snarled Snampaw, who was prodding some moss with her paw. Greypaw and Firepaw exchanged glances, but said nothing. Firepaw raked together a pile of moss with his claws. When he gathered his bed into a cozy nest, he circled it until he was comfortable and settled down. His whole body felt drowsy with contentment. This was his home now. He was a member of ThunderClan.